In this video, I'll be demonstrating using Excel to create a schedule or a um, list of the accumulated amounts at the end of se sequence of years in the account. You recall in class that we had, you remember what we needed was the accumulated value function. In Excel, we are going to place in that cell, we are going to place a formula. And we tell Excel the formula we're interested in by putting an equal sign in the formula bar. And then we specify the numbers we want Excel to compute. In this case, we're going to compute a, an in, initial investment of $2,000 at 6%. And you recall the simple interest formula was the principal. So we enter 2,000 times and then 1 plus the interest rate of 0 0.06. When we've entered the formula the way we want it, we can, we can click the check mark there and Excel will take the numbers that you gave it and compute it. And you can see that the accumulated amount at the end of year one will be $2,120 is what we would, would expect. The original 2000 and then the interest of $120 which is 6% of 2000 At the end of the second year the formula will be $2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 times 2. We click the button or click the check mark, the formula is computed, and the value is placed in the cell where it belongs. But if you notice the two cells, that one that one is the principal times 6.01 times year one, one year. And the next one is exactly the same values, except the one has ch changed to the two. So in Excel, it has a feature that allows you to let Excel copy a formula in a way that you specify it to do. So in year three, if we drag that down, Excel will copy it and place it in the new cell. But that's not exactly what we wanted, was it? because what it did is it copied the two as well. So instead what we will do is when we go to the formulas instead of hard coding or actually placing the one in there you'll notice the column to the left of the, that formula contains the number one. So instead of telling it one we're going to tell Excel go to cell not, uh, labeled column A row two pick up the number you have there and use that to ca calculate. If we do that, we get the value that we wanted. But now when you drag down the formula from the line above, Excel will go and take what was in A2 and say you must want to mean A3 and you notice it incremented the row number from 2 to 3 and when I go down the next one it inter inter uh, implements or increases the row number from 3 to 4 and gives us the properly computed value. So if we continue that down let us say for 20 years we have a schedule for simple interest. We now know what the account balance will be at the end of 
each year in that 20 year period of time. Well, that's fine. It, we're fixed now at uh, for two thousand dollars but with a very simple change we can make this spreadsheet be a very simple interest simple interest calculator that will calculate the amount of uh, any investment and by doing that instead of for example go to column B row 2 and in there we put the 2000 but if instead of the 2000 we referred to the cell that contained the 2000 it will now go to that row or that cell pick up the number there and compute similarly we could could go to the pick out the interest rate and again refer to the cell that's in it say pick up the interest rate we wanted multiply it by what you find in A2 and we computed the value however if we now were to duplicate that by dragging it down we got an error what happened well let's look at the formula if you look at the formula it took what was in E2 or e, uh, in the previous one there was an E1 E2 and when it duplicated it went E2 to E3 which is not what we wanted it to do we wanted it to keep E1 because that's where I wrote the principal and we wanted to keep E2 because that's where I had the, the interest rate Excel has the ability or has a feature that allows you to say take that value let's go to this one I'll do that one instead hold on take that value at, but when you copy it I don't want you to increase it I want you to anchor it or fix it there accomplish that by putting a dollar sign in front of the E and a dollar sign in front of the one which tells it fix that cell or anchor that cell so that as we I tell you to copy it I don't want you to change that one we also don't want the interest rate to change which we find in E2 so we could put a type we could type a dollar sign in there in front of the E and a dollar sign in front of the two and we would have our formula but Excel has another shortcut that allows you to do that and that is F uh, hitting the key F4 so watch what happens when I hit the key F4 you notice Excel took the cell reference and put a dollar sign in front of the column and a dollar sign in front of the, the uh, row well if I hit F4 again Excel said oh you didn't want both of them just fix the row number but allow the column to change and if I copied in the right direction maybe that would help if I hit it a third time it would say oh I guess then you may keep the column the same but increment the row if I had it still again it brought it back to the reference E2 well, I want to fix it anchor it the way I did row 1 or at the way I did the principal so now if I click it you got the correct, correct pro, uh, computation but now when I drag it you will see that all it does is increments A1, A2 to A3, but keeps E1 and E2 fixed. So now if I drag that all the way down to the bottom, I now have a calculator that will now calculate. Oops, which will now calculate the amounts by simply changing the entry in E1 and if you watch the column you will see Excel adjusts the, the accumulated amount with the new principal. It will do the same thing if I change 
the interest rate. So now I have a simple interest calculator made out of a spreadsheet. And so I can look to see what the accumulated amount is for, for any principal amount and any nominal interest rate. Okay. Sometimes your readers may want to see a, um, a graph instead of a, uh, just simply a table. And Excel has the ability to chart uh, series like this. So what, what, what you do is you simply select the rows and columns that contain the values. And if you want them to label the axes, you can include the, the headers on there. And then say Insert. And on the Insert menu, they have a section called Charts. And in there, it's the kind of chart you want it to select. A column chart, a line chart, a pie chart. We're going to start off with a scatter chart. And what a scatter chart says, it simply plots the values uh, for it each year. When we enter that, we have a table. We have a chart or a graph. And as you can see, there's a point for each of the years along there from 0 to 20. And if you recall, we mentioned in class that it was a linear. And if we look at that, we see that nice straight line there. And that's the way it's a linear graph. Okay. Um, once you have that chart, you can alter it a little bit, for example. You could say, well, let's change the design. I didn't want... It, it now showed me the blue points, but I'd rather use red ones instead. That looks better. Or maybe I want to change the chart type. Hit the design, chart type, and it will now say, well, I did a scatter graph with just the points. Why don't I do a scatter graph that includes the points and the line? Click OK, and it modifies the the graph to include lines between it. It's a little hard to see there. I'll remove that and you can ex see it expands it. Okay, so we have a nice simple picture of uh, what our accumulated value would be over time.